This video contains spoilers for all the major points from the Outriders game before and up to the end of the demo. If you want to go into the game completely fresh and unaware, probably skip this one. If you liked the video, share it with a friend so they can pretend to know stuff too. Let's start there. Time to rewind to the far off land of 2034. Earth was in pretty bad shape. All the pollution and constant bombings had really done a number on the old gal, and she was sort of done with the abuse. Cue the earthquakes. Now humans don't really like their stuff being constantly broken and the ground opening up and swallowing people, so the people in charge got together and decided enough was enough. Time to leave this dumb planet that we don't even like anyway with all its toxic air and wars and death and everything. So a really smart lady named Professor Sibylla Flores built a fancy engine that lets you travel fast. And I mean fast. She brings up the point that it's probably best to just move to a new planet that isn't totally ruined. Luckily there is one just down the road by the name of Enoch. So like college students that already lost a deposit in their apartment, we decide fixing things isn't worth it and we should just instead skedaddle. Escaping a doomed planet is expensive and pretty complicated to arrange, so the is put into place. They put into initiative the Outriders. Badass bad boys and girls who are lean, mean, and ready to rescue anyone. Mostly. While they're doing that, the rest of the ECA started working on the way out. Two ships are built, the Flores, yes like the lady, and the Caravel. The Caravel. Caravel. That. Cut to 2076. Caravel. Is supposed to leave the planet before the Flores, taking with it most of the Outriders. The day of the launch arrives. All of the Outriders, the heroes of the planet, are boarded and prepared to go. All sights are set on the future. Humanity's last hope soars into the sky towards a new frontier. And then they blow up. Everyone on board dies. The florist, however, does not blow up. Unfortunately, even as big as it is, it can only carry about half a million people, which is a lot less than Earth holds. So those that are left behind sort of start to riot and bring the ship down. Luckily, those that are set to leave do make it on board and the ship sets off. And we're back to the present. On Enoch. Home sweet home. We land. It's nice. It's green. We start running it over with our big trucks. We're an outrider. Part of the second wave of recruits after the original, well, you know. The mission is to find beacons that we sent beforehand to make sure this place is as nice as the brochure said it was. Now let's meet the crew that will help us on this epic quest. First off, Captain Jack, the leader of the new Outriders on Enoch. He has a cool hat and his sweet mustache. Don't get attached. Jacob, the sourpuss Polish engineer that keeps our vehicles going and drinks our booze. Shira, the smart young ECA scientist who is here to read charts and computers and be smart. Maxwell, the ECA leader and clearly not a British bad guy. And a bunch of unimportant people. We set off into the wilds. The first beacon is easy to find. We grab the data and it points us to number two. Maxwell tells us to get back to camp, but we're too much of a main character for that, so we go looking for the second beacon. While in the forest, one of our guys drinks some of the black pudding that was on the ground and gets sick. Way to go, Magnus. We find the pod, but it turns out it's actually relaying a signal from somewhere else on the planet. Which is impossible because we're the only people here! The hard drive is fried though, so we write down the frequencies with permanent sharpie and head back. Soon after, the sky explodes and surprisingly precise and plot-driven lightning starts to take out our crew one by one. We watch our dear friend, what's her face, get zipped out of existence which causes us to make this noise. Jacob uses his years of technical training to restart the truck and we make an escape back to camp. Maxwell is a little upset with us for not listening to his orders and an argument breaks out about what safe to land means. We notice things are starting to heat up. 
but before we can say anything, Maxwell makes a mind-blowing argument that leaves Jack speechless. The glorious leader then tries to make a quick exit, having clearly won the discussion. However, we follow suit with a counterpoint that really brings down the forest. Fire is not on the recommended list of habitable environments, so Shiro picks us up and places us in a cryopod to cool off for the rest of the day. She forgets to set an alarm and we get Philip J. Fried forward a bit longer than intended. A kind man by the name of Dr. Zahidi and his helpful assistant Jane let us out of the pod and into the world of Enoch. Remember them, they're really important later. We're picked up by a ragtag band of misfits known as the insurgents who generously decide to bring us to their camp. Along the way, we are told that it's been 30 years since we went to sleep. The ECA split into two groups which are now at war, and the planet is full of deadly technology erasing storms. We see our captors employ the Maxwell defense, a ride through what has to be the worst smelling tunnel on any planet, and just before we can get the name of their interior decorator, we are thrusted into the harsh plains of no man's land. Just in time for a new storm to roll in. We are struck by the beauty and chaos like a metal pole through the chest. <gasps> After we compose ourselves, we find that death is not so easy, and we have been imbued with the power to command one of the four basic elements. Earth. Fire. Time. Guns. With these new abilities, we make our way through the desolate landscape, removing heads from shoulders and parents from their children. We reach the other side and come across a man in a trench coat named Seth. Initially, he tries to kill us, but then recognizes that we are the main character, and so he leaves us alone and helps us get to safety. Rift Town is not what one would call nice. Still, it's better than most of the outside and comparatively safe from the storms and insurgents. Shira's here, and now rocking a stylish new eye patch. She fills us in on the situation with the war. In short, things aren't going great for what remains of the ECA. Supplies are low, the insurgents have greater means, and to top it all off, Jacob has been captured. We head towards the underground playing a rather extreme knock-knock joke on the guard, and then making our way through, putting our new powers to use. We find the old man and bring him back to Rift Town for a long overdue reunion. After returning, Shira continues to forget the words thank you, and instead fills us in on this new power and accompanying responsibility. We are now an altered, a human changed by the storm. Upside is, we're basically unkillable. Downside is, another altered can kill us. Further downside is, the enemy has a lot of altereds. This doesn't discourage us though, the plot must go on. Coincidentally, Shira has a mission lined up for us. A supply line has been cut off by another altered that is fighting for the insurgents. Seth is too busy brooding, and so we're sent in to take care of business. After a leisurely walk through fields of corpses and bombarded structures, we find ourselves at the electrical tower. Gauze, the altered we're here to kill, makes an admittedly impressive entry. Despite his showmanship, we dispatch him quickly and head forward to finish our mission. Seth's here again, apparently enjoying the show. He gives us several vague clues about what's going to happen later in the story and berates us for helping the ECA. Then he leaves. We open the path, don't get that legendary drop again, and then return to camp. Jacob has packed his things and we are rejoined with Jane, remember her? Who is now on a mission to find Dr. Zahidi, who has been captured and in need of rescuing. Zahidi is one of the only people left that can track the mysterious signal we found in the jungle. Thankfully that permanent sharpie is made to last and we still have the frequency needed to help find it. We are now set to venture out of Rift Town and into the looming and treacherous world of Enoch. Hello everyone. First off I want to say a big thank you for helping us get to a thousand subs. This is a great milestone for the channel and I'm looking forward to watching it grow more. 
This video is pretty different from my usual stuff. I wanted to have some fun with it and I would generally like some feedback on the format. If it's something you guys enjoy, let me know and I might make more in the future. As always, friendly reminder to do all the supporting things. It really helps me out.